Hello everyone, thanks for stopping by my channel. My name is Rachel and it is time for another week of What's for Dinner. I saw this short video on how to make these chili cheese dogs in like these little boats somewhere. I'm not sure where it was, but I decided I wanted to give them a try. So here I am getting to work, cutting these slits in each of these hot dog buns. And then I'm just pressing that extra bread down inside so that I'm making a little cavity in order to fit my hot dogs inside. Instead of hot dogs, I am using smoked sausage. But first, we have to lay down our cheese slices. I'm using Kraft American cheese slices and I'm just breaking them up into little strips and then laying them down in the bottom of these hot dog buns. In the video that I saw, they just put cold hot dogs down inside of the buns, but I'm using smoked sausage. So I heated them up in a frying pan on the stove while I was preparing these buns and putting the cheese in. I also warmed up my Hormel no bean chili on the stove as well. So I did create extra steps for myself, but I just didn't trust the recipe. Sometimes it happens. And I just have to modify the recipe in a way that makes me feel comfortable. After I have each cheese slice laid down inside of the bun, I just poured a little bit of that chili on top of the cheese. And I have to be honest, the whole time that I was making these, I kept thinking, what's the difference in just opening up the hot dog bun where the slit is and then putting your cheese and chili in hot dog in that way? Can it really make that much of a difference? But I just went with it and kept on going. So next I am just putting each of those, um, I guess these are called grillers, inside of the bun. And I should have made my slits a little bit bigger since these are bigger than an average hot dog. But as you see, I'm making it work. And all you do after you get all of your hot dogs nestled into these um, buns is go back over the top with whatever you want to top them with. I put a little more chili on top and you could do chopped onions if you wanted to, but I just wasn't in the mood to cut onions on this day and so we skipped that part. You could also come back and layer another, um, like some more cheese on top of them as well. It really is just up to you. And as I mentioned in the video that I watched, they put everything into the buns cold and then put them into the oven and cooked them all at the same time. But it didn't look very appetizing to me until the end and I didn't have much faith that they would turn out right. So I warmed everything up ahead of time before I put it in the oven and I just let them cook until everything was nice and crispy but not overly cooked. I always like to put mustard on my chili cheese dogs. We served up some tater tots on the side, and these actually were a lot better than they would have been just opened up and made like a regular cheese dog. I don't know. Something about that bun being all nice and crispy and then everything kind of being down inside that well. These were delicious and a lot of fun. The next dinner is one that you've seen me make before. We had some pork steak from our um, pig from our freezer, so that's what's going on in this sheet pan. I made sure that I lined it really well because the last time I made these, I made a sticky burnt mess that was really hard to clean, so I wanted to make sure that I did not forget to put foil on the pan this time. Then I just seasoned them with some meat tenderizer and then covered them back up with some foil and put them in the fridge overnight. This was just a little extra step that I took to make sure that when I came home from work, I'd be able to pop them right in the oven and get dinner going right away. 
without having to open up all the packaging and clean my pork steaks and season them up and you know the drill. So just saving myself some work in the future. And these went in the fridge overnight. The next day, Bill popped them in the oven and I did end up having to work over, so he was kind of on his own. I did make it home in time to get a video of him getting them sauced up. And here he's just brushing on some uh, Sweet Baby Ray's and that's all we're doing for these. We're gonna put them back in the oven, uncovered this time, so that the barbecue sauce can get nice and caramelized. We like our pork steak to have some nice crispy burnt edges. And in a cast iron skillet, I am just sauteing some onions. I'm going to make a really quick uh, pan of baked beans. I'm using some bacon that was left over from the weekend when we made breakfast. I have some pork and beans that I'm going to use this time. And I'm doing two cans for this batch of baked beans. This is a really quick way to get baked beans that taste like they were baked in the oven. I have some chopped garlic and I'm just adding some brown sugar right out of the bag because I had not had time to put it in my container yet. So this ended up being about a quarter cup of brown sugar. Just stirring it all together and using some very small drops of mustard just to get the taste but I don't want it to be overpowering. In another pan, I boiled some water and I added a little bit of milk and some butter. Let that all get nice and cooked down. Added some salt and some pepper. And then I'm going to add a packet of dry ranch dressing or seasoning mix. You know, the Hidden Valley stuff. And then I'm going to pour in a package of instant mashed potatoes. I bought a bunch of these when I did my big grocery haul and they do come in handy on days like this when you're running late but we were kind of getting a little bit um, sick of the instant mashed potatoes so that's why I added the dry ranch seasoning mix to it just for something that's a little different and here's our pork steak coming out of the oven. They turned out perfectly fork tender. Whenever I do a little planning ahead, my future self is always super grateful. This meal did not taste like it was a rushed, throw-together meal like it was. It was very delicious and so flavorful. I wouldn't normally make gre or baked beans and mashed potatoes on the same plate, but hey, it was dinner and it was delicious. It's my kitchen and my rules. For the next dinner that I'm sharing, I actually followed a recipe. Well, as close as I possibly could. To get started, I'm putting an onion into my food processor and then I'm plopping in a nice handful of parsley. In my mixing bowl, I have a pound of ground pork and a pound of ground beef. And then I'm just going to add all of that um, parsley and onion mixture that I can scrape out of my food processor bowl. The recipe said to use a fatty cut of meat so that everything will stick together on the skewer. I also added some garlic powder, some cumin, and a little bit of cinnamon. Now the reason that I followed the measurements exactly this time was because of that cinnamon. I was more than a little bit afraid. And I did not have any sumac, but I did some research and it said that I could substitute lemon juice in place of the sumac. And um, unfortunately, I didn't realize at the time, but I forgot the oregano, um, which it called for in the recipe, but I'm gonna tell you, I didn't miss it. So this turned out really, really good and so flavorful. I just, um, at this time, started to form the or mold the meat around the skewer it seemed a little weird to me when I read the recipe but um, it actually worked out well and was super fast to make a lot faster than doing um, cut up veggies and meat on a skewer or kebab so I did like that when it came to making these kebabs they come together very quickly and have lots of flavor 
Now once I have all of my meat on the skewer, I just pop them in the oven. I did 375 and um, then I got busy making up some rice. Now I've been doing a lot of reading about rice because it's just not one of our favorite foods. And so another um, chef that I watch on YouTube was talking about making rice and using all of your flavors in your liquids because the rice absorbs all of that water when it cooks so then your rice will have lots of flavor. So I took the water and put it in my food processor so that I could get all of those bits of parsley and onion and then I got busy seasoning up with some lemon juice, some garlic, some crushed red pepper, some of that mushroom seasoning and of course some salt and pepper and then I just let that rice cook with the lid on. In another pan I put some butter and I added some diced carrots, some onion, and the last of my little zucchini. Just got those busy sauteing up. And then I just put a little bit of garlic powder on those as well. Some salt and some pepper. Some more of the mushroom seasoning. And some tahini. Just going to let those cook down and get nice and tender. Mushrooms sounded really good to me, so I added a can because I did not have any fresh. I did add a little bit of that liquid from those mushrooms just to make sure that there was something to um, mix in with those spices. And here's how that rice turned out, and I must say, this was a very flavorful rice. Our kebabs are ready to take out of the oven. And we all really enjoyed these kebabs. I think that we will probably make these quite often throughout the summer outside on our grill. And I just plated up my rice and my veggies along with one of those meat kebabs. And that was dinner. On the next day, I just kept it very simple. Once again, coming in with some of those carrots and some olive oil. Just gonna get those started because I like my carrots to be very, very soft. I cut up one more of those zucchini into bite-sized pieces, pretty thin so that everything cooks at the same time. Added my salt and pepper and then some of that mushroom seasoning. Just stirring that up and getting them cooked down nice and soft. Then I added my sliced up onions. These will cook pretty quickly, so I added them a little later. Drop in a whole container of chopped garlic. Give it all a nice stir. I just wasn't feeling like doing anything very complicated this day. I added some baby bok choy. Just getting everything nice and tender and a little bit of a sear. After I removed my veggies, I fried up an egg. I steamed my quinoa for one minute in the microwave. Then I added some of those cooked veggies right into my bowl. And then I'm just going to add that baby bok choy and my fried egg. Quinoa bowls are one of my favorite go-tos when I'm just not really in the mood for a very complicated meal. And for some acidity, I just added some pickled beets into my bowl. I love the versatility of making dinner in the bowl. Everybody can add exactly what they like. The next day, I gave myself the day off from cooking, and we just got Little Caesars. St. Patrick's Day was kind of a flop this year, and that was mostly because of our crazy weather. By the time I got out of work and did my running around, I was just in a hurry to get something in a pot, on the stove, and then on the plate. So here I am just throwing some potatoes that I peeled and washed into the food processor and getting them sliced up really quick. I had thought ahead and bought a cabbage, but there was no way that a brisket or um, corned beef or anything like that was getting made on this Friday. So into my pan with some oil, I'm just going to salt and pepper these potatoes. 
and then a little bit of garlic powder and um, I'm gonna throw in some onions and some shredded cabbage and basically just see what happens. On Friday, the weather has just, it was like so super windy and cold here. It was very hard to function or get out and do any of the things that I needed to do. I um, had to make food for my granddaughter's first birthday party, and so I needed to do shopping for that. But even just pumping gas on this day was so hard because you just felt like the um, wind was just, beating you or just cutting you with razors. Um, so a one dish meal is just something that had to be made on this day. So once my potatoes were nice and tender and starting to fry up, I just added the rest of the ingredients right into the same pan. I added smoked sausage and then I came back in with um, that garlic powder here and then a can of petite diced tomatoes and I'm using a can of chopped green chilies as well and we like spice in our house so I do come back in with some crushed red pepper and I just let this cook until that cabbage was nice and wilted and boom that was our dinner I was asked to make the food for my granddaughter's first birthday party, so I decided to do a walking taco bar. And to get started, I just got busy getting all of the ground beef cooked up for the taco meat part of it. I picked up these big, huge rolls of ground beef at Gordon's for $24.89 each. And I did end up getting three of these. I know that's a lot of meat but I had some pretty vague instruction on how many guests would be at the party, so I just played it safe and made a lot. I started cooking this meat on Friday night and then I finished it off on Saturday morning. And in case you're wondering, there was enough left over that we were able to bring some home and put it into our freezer. On Saturday morning, I got busy prepping for the party. And here you see that I am putting some refried beans in the bottom of a foil pan and just spreading them out. I'm making a couple pans of uh, Mexican seven layer dip. Although I'm not really sure how many layers I actually had in my dips. So I'm only doing two different pans because I know some people do not like avocado. So one will have avocado and one will not. And for that layer, I just picked this up at um, Gordon's also. And it is just basically mashed avocado. And I did that because I am not a fan of guacamole, but I do like avocado. So again, this is just the way that I like to make it. So... I guess that's what everyone else is getting too. Once that avocado layer was all set, then I came back in with some sour cream. And I'm not sure if I did these layers the right way or if there is a right way to do the layers. I just kind of did my own thing. And it was probably just whatever was already sitting the closest to me and what I grabbed to put on next. I picked up this big old jug of mild chunky salsa from Gordon's because I knew there would be a lot of um, salsa needs going on. So I used a little bit of that for this dip as well. I poured it out into a bowl and then used a slotted spoon so that all of that uh, juice didn't kind of make my dip really soggy. This was a really runny salsa. 
Next, I just sprinkled on some cheese. I used some already sliced black olives just to make it fast and then chopped up some cilantro to throw on top and then put the lids on. The remaining olives went into a container as well as the rest of the cilantro. I just filled my two pans with the shredded cheese so that people could serve themselves. I filled up two foil pans with this cheese and I knew that, you know, cheese would be something that would go pretty quick and it did. I'm so glad we had all of this cheese. I just had a brand new clean tote that I just put all of these um, pans into to transport to the party. Surprisingly, everything fit into the tote except for the meat, which had to be drained over and over and over again but it turned out perfectly. Sorry, you really can't tell because of all the steam. But I just sat out a huge box of Doritos so that everybody could make their walking tacos. And of course, the yummy dip here on the end. And everybody loved it. I got so many compliments on the food that day. And here is a little bit of the before action, setting up for the party. Here's the birthday girl. She had so much fun turning one. And that's going to be the end to another busy week. Thank you so much for stopping by and seeing what we're dishing up at our house. I'll see you in the next one. Bye for now.